Right, we're on. It's 5.45 in the morning. That's why I look tired. I'm going to play seven holes, every shot, but pay real close attention to what I do. How we start and how we stop every shot. Start. So driver down the left side of the fairway is the best, so a little bit of right hand to allow for that. Okay, sliced it a wee bit, it's okay. Stop. Start. Two four two. Cut hybrid. Keep cutting. That's fine there. Stop. Stop. Little 58, just short of the par 5. Little 58, little less pressure on the left hand, survey style. Oh, very good. <laughs> Stop. Right, birdie to start with. Let's keep going. Stop. Par four, dog leg, left to right, 280. Smooth fade. One Stevie boy. Bounce it. Okay, it's okay. Bunker up there. I think I might be in the bunker, but that's not a bad shot from there. Stop. Start. Right. So this is a bit funky. Just make sure there's plenty on it. Could be pretty good actually. Stop. Boom, another birdie. Birdie, birdie start, stop, start approach. Start. Little draw would be ideal here, around the corner. Little draw ball, one Steve. Good. It's 
We'd be tailed off a wee bit though. Ah, oh, it was so close. Okay. Stop. I've hit driver three times and every one of them's tailed off just a fraction to the right. It's far too early in the day for hitting driver. <laughs> Start. Right back in the sunlight, this is tricky. One, four, one. One, four, one. Out the semi. One wedge is 140. This is good. Gotta watch for the flyer though. It's wet. This green looks as though it's not been top dressed like the last two. So this is very different how this is going to react. 141. One. It's a good solid wedge, Steve. Hard to see in the sun, not sure. Stop. So came up quite a long way short of where I wanted to be. I think I was a little bit scared of getting the flyer out the rough there. But it's okay, we're on. Oh, you're kidding! I thought we had three in a row there. <laughs> Somebody drew these greens. <sighs> Start. Okay, I've leaked three drives to the right. But confidence is good, we're two under par. Let's release this a little bit more, Steve. Let's let's do this. Come on. No, leaked it right again. Come on, Steve, that's... Okay. Being the semi-rough on the right. It's, it's playable, it's fine, it's absolutely fine. Stop. Start. Okay. So 129, shocking tee shot. Trying to draw it and losing it to the right is not acceptable, but that's done. 129, over the bunker, left of the green's good. Stay away from the flag. Commit to this, Steve. 129. 129, back edge is fine. Again, hard to see in the sun, but the strike was okay. I think it's all right. Stop. So that was good, that came out exactly as I wanted. It was a very good shot from the rough. Left of the pin, closer than I expected. right on it again. Par again, still two under. Right, we're through four holes, we're two under par, driving's not been great, but we'll work on that as we go. I can deal with that, that's okay. Have you noticed before every shot and after every shot, I've touched my head cover and said the word start, 
fully immerse myself in the process, focus exactly what I'm trying to do, play the shot, analyse just briefly what's happened, where I'm going to be playing my next shot from, and then I touched the head cover again and said the word stop. If you watch tennis, Maria Sharapova, she would play her shot and then she would go to the back of the court and she would click her heels together and then come down and get ready for the next point. Now she would do that on every single shot. So that's Maria's way of regrouping. She's probably assessing what's happened, looking to the future as to what she's about to do and then go and fully immerse herself in the process. So that little click of the heels at the back of the court is her start-stop. In golf, if we have a start-stop, then golf becomes more fun. Out with the actual shot we're playing, but there's too much time on the golf course. We're here for four hours, so and we're only hitting the ball, our, our pre-shot routine's maybe 40 seconds or so, so from start to stop, and there's too much time to think in between. So you can think about anything you want in between, but at that time, don't think about what you've just done or what you're about to do. That's when your start-stop comes in. That's your time for thinking. So an example here would be, so I could be talking to my friends just now, I've got a par three, I've got one, seven, nine to the pin, I'm analysing that as I'm talking to my pals. My pals play their shot. I know I've got 179. For me, that is 6 iron goes 180. So it's my turn up on the tee now, so start. Take my 6 iron. I press the start button, so I'm committed now. Keeping it smooth. Nice straight ball here. Left of the pin's good. Bunker to the right, left of the pin's okay. Okay, it's just front left of the green. Never struck it all that well. But do you know what? It's good enough. In fact, it was a terrible strike, but it's good enough. It's putting just from the front left. It's, it's, I'll take it, absolutely. Stop. So now I've stopped, now I can muck about with my pals again. Now we can start talking about the golf at the weekend. We can start talking about the football this weekend. We can start talking about anything I want because I have no emotional attachment to that shot. No Flannery from peak performance. He told me that if you can detach yourself from the outcome of the shot, the golf becomes much easier. So imagine you had no emotional attachment to the shot. Once it's hit, it's hit. There's nothing you can do. It's in the air. I never hit that very well, but it's gone roughly where I wanted to. But I can't go there and take it back and do it again. It's done. It's happened. So what's the point in getting emotional about it? Even, even if, you're, I mean, if you're an elite golfer, again, once the ball's off the club face, it's done. You can do everything you want in that 45 seconds, that start-stop, to analyse what you're going to do, what you have done, where you're going to be playing your next shot from. But in between the stop and the next start, there's not a lot you can do. So that was probably one of my worst strikes of the day. In fact, it was, without doubt, the worst strike of the day. But it's done now. So, start. Little 54 degree wedge. If I can pick my landing area, let's do this. Within my 45 seconds, 40 seconds. Good, I see where I'm going. I can only control what I'm doing between start and stop. I see my landing area. Oh, it's good. It's good, so I'm analysing that, I'm happy. Oh, brilliant. Stop. Now it's time to muck around. See that, boys? How good was that? Did you see that, lads? Two under, I know. Two under. Start, stop. And there's no need to start, stop on that, of course. Okay, good. Now I'm teeing my ball up first before I do my start, before I touch my head cover. The little trigger can be anything. You can touch your head cover, you can touch the button on your trolley, you can touch your umbrella top. Anything you like, you could take something out of your pocket. For me, the rattle of the umbrella, of the head cover, is there's a noise there, so there's a trigger. So I, I'm, I'm taking my time first before I do that. So okay, right, good two under. 
Start. I'm going to hit driver again, even though driver's not been great today. I'm going to fix this. And the fact I'm two under, I'm not going to protect that score. I'm just going to fix driver and play a game of golf. So, loads of room down the right. Let's try and get this one turning over a little bit. I know what to do. Going right again. It's in the air forever. Okay, that's a shocker. Absolutely shocking, driver. Just today's not the day for me. I cannot seem to turn that over. I just seem to be leaving this face wide open today. But it's still in place. I've still got a shot. So at the end of the day, it's really not that bad, is it? Let's be honest. Stop. So that was quite possibly the worst drive of the day. Even worse than the one on the fourth. So not playing all that well. Tee shot on four, big slice. Tee shot on the last hole, slappy six iron, then slice drive here. And so I, would, I was hoping to hit a good drive here and leave myself a hybrid to the green being par five. I was looking for that, but it never happened. So that's fine. It's done as we know. Start. So six iron from the lie. To advance it up there should leave me a nice little half wedgy thing to the green. Let's get this on the fairway though. Let's not let's not be lazy about this. Yeah, it's good. Very good. So it's up the left side of the fairway. A great line into a back right pin or right hand pin. That's absolutely spot on. So. Even though the tee shot was bad, I was managed to put myself back into position. And it's, it's good enough, you know, let's take it. Stop. Start. Let's just get a yardage on this one. 83. So yep, left that little half wedge I was talking about. Fifty-four degrees. That sun's gone away. It's got a little bit dark, a little bit cold. Eighty-three yards. Pin's actually quite central, so this is just straight up and at it. Nothing silly. Yeah, good. That's really wet. So that's good. So I'm, I'm past the pin, just to the right of the pin. Got a putt coming back down the slope, which is not ideal, but it's a chance for a birdie. I've considered the tee shot, executed the second shot very, very well. Third shot, okay. Put myself in a position. I'm happy. I can, I've assessed it. I'm happy with that. I can now press the stop button and move on. I can do that. Stop. <laughs> It's a very wet part of the course. So you'll notice there's nothing to do with putting. There's no start-stop putting. There might be another trigger you can implement in there. Obviously I can't touch my head cover because we're in a different area where the golf bag is. Um, so there's something you could possibly do. I, I'm really all about getting to the green and then worrying about it there. You'll also notice at the start-stop there is no... There's no real talk about technique. It's very much all focused on the shot. Where I am, where I want to go, how I'm going to get there. There's nothing about Eureka, there's nothing about right palm to the sky, there's nothing about shoulders opening, there's nothing in there about technique because that's all for the range. It's all about the actual process, emerging myself in the process of what I'm actually trying to do, where I want the ball to go rather than the technique. That's poor. 
That's poor par, still two under though. Right, here we go, dog leg to the right, final hole, 392 yards. Par four, you can cut the trees on the right hand side. Start. I'm going to take driver, I know there's a lot of trouble on the right hand side and I've sliced every drive today, pretty much. Well, I have. But, my thinking is here that if I hit a straight one, if I manage to fluke a straight one somehow, I'm going to hit the fairway. If I slice it with a good start line, then I'm going to curve round the corner and still hopefully hit fairway. So that, that left to right ball flight that I've got with driver today, I'm just going to use it here. I'm just going to take a normal swing and it will peel off. So, I mean, good solid driver. Try and hit a straight one if it curves to the right. As long as I've got a good start line, I'll be okay. There we go, exactly that. So, <laughs> so it just missed the tree on the right hand side. Again, not a great swing. I mean, not a good swing at all. Coming in there with that face open, that's obviously too early in the morning to get the body to work, that's just me. But because I took a good start line, I went for the middle of the fairway, it peeled off like the last three, last five drives really, and it's gone round the corner and hit fairway. So using that poor display or poor performance, to put myself in a place is good. If I was a little bit more switched on this morning, I would probably just take two hybrid, pumped it down this straight line, so two straight lines to get to the green. But I knew what this was going to do. I know how bad it's been today, so I used it to my advantage. Happy with that. Stop. I call that performance management. So rather than course management, manage my way around the course, that shot there, I manage myself on my current performance. Smart. Okay, so a quick yardage check while the boys are doing their thing. 102. Let the lads play, do their thing. I'm now going to, it's now my turn. Start. 102 yards, 54 degrees. Pin's quite close to the front. Nice aggressive shot, Steve. 102. Good strike. Good, so again, I mean, even that, I leaked a little bit to the right, so something I have to work on, but it's fine. You know, it's putting, we're maybe 20 feet away. It's fine, we'll, we'll take it. Let's go. Stop. So here we go, not the best shot in, but that's done. When I press the stop button, that's forgotten about, so I'm just doing that to explain to you guys. So this is a new shot altogether. So greens are quite slow with the amount of top dressing that's on them. And the last three putts I've had have left short. So let's make sure we get this one up, have a good go, last hole, good chance of a birdie. Well, it turned a bit late, didn't it? it? Doesn't turn as much when it's covered in sand, of course. But anyway, good. So there we go, finished with a par, finished two under par. Driver was poor. Irons were, God, they were okay. Putting was pretty good at times. It generally just, just okay, but I taught myself through it well. The start-stop analogy, or the approach by start-stop, is a fantastic trigger. So you press the button, once you've pressed the button, that's you fully immersed in the process. That is you, that's your time to play golf, that's your 45 seconds, and use them, use them well. Don't use them for technique, use them for the shot you're about to play. Don't use them for what's just happened, use them for the shot you're about to play. Once you've played the shot, analyse it. Take a little second and say, okay, I went right because I left the face open, or I had it really, really well, just, just analyse it in general, and then think about where are you? Okay, I'm down the right-hand side of the fairway. I still have a shot to the green, it's absolutely fine. It's good enough. It's not perfect, but it's good enough. And then you walk off that tee, once you've hit stop, you then walk off that tee, the job's done, you analysed, you executed, and then you analysed again. And then you can walk down there and chat with your pals, regardless of where the golf ball is, because the, the, the damage is done. 
<laughs> you know, you, you've missed the fairway or you've hit the fairway, regardless of where you've gone, you've analysed what's happened, you're in that position, then look forward to the next shot. But forget about it, forget about the next shot. Absolutely forget about it until you press the start button. Once you press the start button, that's when you start worrying about the next shot. Don't worry about it a hole ahead or walking up to the golf ball. Pointless, just a waste of time, a waste of energy. So there we go, I hope you've really enjoyed this video. I've enjoyed it, I've enjoyed getting out to play a few holes of golf, even though it wasn't the prettiest. But I'm happy I finished two under par. I mean, take that. If somebody said to me, you're going to strike the ball the best you possibly can today and finish two under par, Steve, would you take it? 100%. And I came out here and hit it pretty shitty, let's be honest, and finished two under par. But I managed my way very, very well. Guys, I hope you're enjoying these videos. Please hit that subscribe button, that would be fantastic. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.